when I when I'm doing the when I'm doing your homework problems, I use the hints all the time. I don't penalize you for going to the hints. Okay? I accidentally did that on one assignment. That was about the stupidest thing I could do because then you then you won't go to them because you guys are afraid to go to them. All right. Oh, and one other thing on the homework. Do those submissions, if you didn't like the problem or it was confusing, please use those submissions. I read them. I, I respond every once in a while, but not often. If one of the things screwed you up, like uh, somebody sent me an email, they're having a trouble entering the epsilon not thing, and I understand your frustration sometimes, but I really can't uh, go in and change. I can, but it takes me about four or five minutes and, and think about it. There's, I've got 350 students times 12 homework assignments times 15 problems per assignment. It comes out to be like 65,000 problems. I can't go back in and worry about all, you know, if, you, if, it, if it screwed you, it's, you know, life goes on, you'll be okay. Um, and the big objective is that you learn. But I, I feel your pain, but there's really not much I can do. I can, there's not much I want to do about it. Let's, put, let's be honest. <laughs> Let's just be honest about it. Um, uh, so, um, but I understand your frustration, if, especially if you're new to mastering physics, and if you're new to you know, and and we've got quite a few students that are new to the new to English too. So that makes it even harder. All right. Okay. So now let's take a look at this. Part. Let me explain to you what's going on here. And remember, never never forget that how much Mother Nature really likes symmetry and things. Okay. So notice what we have here. We've got this capacitor ha, ha, can store has a capacitance of six microfarads. This one has can store three microfarads. Which one's going to store more charge? Let's say this one has well, they tell us uh, Q2 is 40 microcoulombs. How many coulombs do you think is in this one then? 80. Yeah, because it can store twice as much. All right. Um, so that's that's one way to look at it. And the other thing to do with these problems is go. Well, what is the charge on capacitor one? Oh, we already did it. No. Oh well. Um, but if you go to their hints, I love their hints. They're great. You go to the hint. You go, okay, gosh, I gotta read something. I know you guys hate to read things when you're doing homework problems, but every once in a while it really saves in the long run. Okay? Read this, go, okay, consider only the initial section, da 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 from A to D. Okay, so we can do that. And series are parallel. Are these two capacitors in series or parallel? They're in parallel. So that means the voltage in both of them are the same. So if the voltage in one is, is 10 volts, the voltage in the other one will be 10 volts. Now if you're thinking of that other capacitor that's around the loop, he's in series with those two. So those two would actually be in parallel. So good, we can go, all right, it's parallel, great. Moving on, correct, yay team. Okay, now we go to calculate the potential difference across the second capacitor. Q equals C times V, okay? So Q equals C times V, and I think Q in that one capacitor was what, 40? 40 microcoulombs? Uh, uh, no, 40 micro, yeah, the charge was 40 microcoulombs, and the charge was what? Three microfarads? So let's do this. Go to the dot can, make a quick thing here. Is it there? Come on, man. It's being, it's being bootsy here. Hold on a second. We'll fix it. There we go. All right, now, and we'll zoom it in a little bit because we're having trouble understanding. So, like I always say, we're, in a, we're Americans in a foreign country, so we'll go slower and louder. So, we'll just draw bigger. All right. Um, so, here we go. Uh, so, Q equals C times V. Can we see that? Yeah. I, I, one, one of the things I'm going to do for you is I'm going to get the, the size 10 pens here. They cost like $19 a piece and they last for like four paragraphs, but that's okay. For you, it's worth it. Anyway, I'm kidding. All right, so four microcoulombs equals, uh, what, was the, what was Q2's capacitance? I can't even remember now. Three? Yeah, that's right. Three microfarads. So the voltage, 
Oh, the nice thing is the 10 to the negative 6s will cancel. So I take 40 divided by 3, and I get about 13.3. So that'd be 13.3 volts. Let's go back to the computer. Come on now. Don't do that. It scares me when it goes to that. Not receiving a single. All right, there we go. Let's say that's 13.3 three sig figs. 13.3 genius. Yes. All right. And I also worked this out before we came. So now let's open this. All right. Now, by the nature of they're in parallel. So that means the voltage is what? The same. So what's the voltage for this one? Yes, 13.3, and so we'll put, type in 13.3, and all that eight minutes of gobbledygook I gave you last time was eight minutes of your life. You will not get back. I apologize, but there we go. Now, so Q, so to, so to compute the Q, we know that the voltage is 13.3. We know that this is 6. So 6 times 13.3 should give me 80. And so we'll put in 80 microcoulombs there. Submit. Genius born every day. Okay, now. Now let's take a look at this picture. Now you got to remember that charge is conserved. Okay, so what's going on here? We've got a, we've got a, uh, a potential difference across here, across A to B. So that means that V, and you can think of V as something that's pushing charge. All right, so it's pushing the charge. And so I get these electrons, they come along here, and they split, you know, uh, let's say uh, three electrons come along here, um, two are going to go down here, and one's going to go across there, right? Because that one's got less storage than the other one. And so but what's going to happen here? What's going to happen on this plate? A bunch of protons are going to gather, right? And they're going to send those, those. So if one electron comes over here and two are down here, so that's going to send one proton around this way. That's going to send two protons around this way. So they're going to hook up again. That's going to be three protons, right? Moving around. So they're going to, so they're going to come. So these electrons, well, I'm sorry. That was stupid. They're going to be electrons. My bad. Okay. Pay no attention to the man in front of the curtain. All right. So anyway, so we got electrons, and the electrons are going to collect up here, right? And so that's there's three of them. So that's going to push those um, protons are going to form here. Aha. So how much charge is going to form on those plates right here? What it, on these two plates right here? If this was what was this, 40? And this was, no, this was 40, this was 80, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this was 40 and this was 80. And we already said that, we already said that they're 40 and 2 to 1. So, so, what do you think the answer is down here for the charge on 3? 120. Is it that easy? Yes, it is. So, so Q3, so Q3 is equal to 120. Okay, we could go to their hints, and they'll tell you just what I told you, how to approach the problem. Don't go to lecture. Second one, um, in this third capacitor, this third capacitor is connected in series with the other guys. Submit. And then since the two capacitors in series uh, are connected between A and D, the third capacitor C is connected between points D and B. The initial section and the third capacitor are connected in series. Good. Capacitors in series. Um, yada, 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 whatever that means. Calculate the total charge in this section. All right. So from A to D, from A to D, I would say that's going to be 80 microcoulombs. It's going to be the sum of those two. Let's submit. Let's see if that's right. Oh, try again. Oh, it's 80 and 40. It's 120. Okay, see, like I said, go back to 1. Skip lecture. Now, come here. 120. Submit. Please be right. Otherwise, we're going to excuse for the rest of the day. Um, all right. So, there we go. When did y'all's next orgo test? A week from Friday? A week from today? 
Yeah, okay. Um, like I said, I've got issues going on at home, so we won't have class next Friday. Go take your orgo test and then just go home, all right? Because I, I need to take care of some things, like my mother. <laughs> so um, I need to step up. My sister's leaving town, so it's time for me to step up on a few things. So anyway, all right, what is the... Uh, all right, so now... Um, yeah, that, yeah, we're going to take the test on Wednesday, and then then I'll have it graded for. Then I don't have any pressure on getting it, trying to get it graded by Friday, and you can just come in Monday, and I'll give it back to you. You'll probably be able to see your grade over the weekend on Blackboard. Oh, that online? What? No, that's the vidiots going to take it online. The vidiots, not you all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. What's that? Okay, it's not online. It's not online. No partial credit online. That's the problem. All right, anyway. Okay, so the total voltage then. So we've got, so C, uh, uh, Q equals C times V. So Q was 120. And C here is, uh, oh, yeah, we got to find the capacitance, the, the C3 capacitance. Oh, they told us. It's 5. There you go. So it's 120 divided by 5, or, or Q, 120 equals CV, so is it 120 divided by 5, is it that easy? No, because we lose some voltage there. We lost the other, um, because this causes a drop, so how did they do that? What's that? Oh! Well, I know it's right. Let's go to hint. What did it tell us to do here? Besides skip lecture. Okay, we read that. Da, da, da. All right, so it says reduce the network of capacitors to a single equivalent capacitor connecting points A and B directly. Oh, that's right. And we know the total charge is 120, so now we've got to connect it. We've got to turn it into a single capacitor. Capacitors in series, uh, in parallel, what do we do? We just add them, right? Just add the two together. So we had three and six. That's nine. And now we've got the one in series, so we've got to do 1 over 9 plus 1 over 5 gives us 2 over 14, right? No. All right. I'm oh, sorry. So we've got 1 over 9 plus 1 over 5. You all can see this, can't you? Here we go. Let's go to the mystery tour. There we go. Equals, uh, if we're talking 45th here, this would be 5 over 45 plus 9 over 45. Hey, we do have a 14 on top. 14 over 45. And then flip it over. So 45 over 14 is the total capacitance. So 45, that's my, uh, that's my C3. And then uh, or my total capacitance of C, A, B. All right. So I've got Q was 120 equals four, 45 over 14 times the voltage. Oh, that's what I'm trying to find. So let's take 120 times, uh, turn on your calculator, that helps too. 120 times 14 equals, divided by 45, boom. 37.3, That's I think that'll be right. That rings a bell. That rings a bell. Oh, okay. 40, what's 45 divided by 14? Uh, 3.2. Oh, three sig figs, 3.21. There you go. Na, na, na. All right, that's correct. So now I'm feeling much better. And this was 120? Yes. We are flying. We are cooking with gas. And then we said that this was uh, 37 something. I'll just submit and I'll say almost. Okay. <coughs> Uh, correct answer was either rounded differently. Of course, it's 37.3. Good. There we go. I feel much better. I'm sorry for that. I, I know that took, gosh dang, 20 minutes? Holy. So, so we spent, right. Oh, to work these problems? No, I work these problems usually before class. But see, well, I tried to wing it. Remember what I've told you. Never do physics on the fly. Do it if you're going to teach it to somebody. Make sure you do the problem first, then come in. Yes, Kenneth.
It took me 12 minutes. <laughs> Supposedly, I'm supposed to know what's going on, too. Right. Okay. Oh, so you see that thing. You're going, okay, I can manage my time. Yeah, when you're learning something new. Let's learn something new now. Let's do this. Let me just tell you some things. Okay? Let's go to the document camera. All right? And let's just learn. I'm going to tell you a few things here that you need to know. It'll make you a better citizen. No, I don't know if it'll do that or not, but anyway. Uh, okay. One of the most important things that you will learn in uh, electricity and magnetism is a thing called Ohm's Law. Okay? Ohm's Law. All right? And, um, yeah, so it, it, it's a yoga equation. Ohm. Anyway, it does this. Here it is. V equals I times R. V equals I times R. Voltage is a constant. Uh, uh, voltage equals I times R, or the voltage divided by I is equal to R. Now, what is I? What am I talking about when I talk about I? Current. Right. Right. Or like in Sesame Street, remember the capital I? Cohen? Y'all see that? Can you little? Oh, sorry. There's this cartoon where they talk about capital I and they'd get out and they'd clean it. And anyway, so, all right. Okay. It was, it was huge in 1971. But anyway, I is current. And that is equal to, does anybody, did anybody do the reading? Uh, what is current equal? What is current? What? Bunch of comedians. All right. Current is the amount of charge. Oh, and, uh, okay. Remember, we talked about this. We're the free electrons in a wire. Okay, we're the free electrons in a wire. And then all of a sudden, the sinister thing you and Sod back there, they put up a negative voltage across the whole back wall. Okay, what are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to try and run out this door. And if somebody's here timing this, how many electrons are going through this, this space? That would be current. So it's the, cha the, it's, the, it's the charge, it's the amount of charge divided by the time. It's a time change, okay? So, yeah, this is where, this is where we get the advantage over the 250 class. They get Dr. Robel or Dr. Lively or Dr. Stoddard talking forever on how to do the, ca the differential equations on those things. I just tell you, you take your charge divided by the time. Piece of cake. All right? I mean, that's all you need to know. And, and don't think you're getting short changed, because I know for a fact that they take the same test questions I give you and give them to their 250 students. And they don't know how to do it. All right, but anyway, uh, okay, because they're so wrapped around the mathematics, they forget that the big idea is how much charge is going through a certain area in a certain amount of time. That's all it is. Okay, so I equals Q over T. So that's the amount of charge. Now, the other, th so, if you're given something like this, let's just take a simple battery here. Now, by convention, let's say this is a 12 volt battery. 4.0 volt battery, and I'm going to put a, a resistor here of 60 ohm. Resistance is measured in ohm. Okay, it's called an ohm. It's a big omega. Remember, in 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 rotational dynamics, we had little omega, which gave us our thing, which I always thought sounded like one of those little baby rappers. You know, little Omega, offspring of, offspring of 50 Cent and Little Kim. But anyway, <laughs> all right, so now, so now we got this thing. Okay. Can you see it? Little Omega? All right, anyway, so, got 12 volts and 60 ohms. What's the current going through this circuit? That's not a quiz question. Oh, I am going to start putting your quizzes online on Blackboard, so you just go to them and answer like three questions. Boom, then you don't have to turn anything in. So you're going, oh, I'm going to come to lecture again. Cool. All right, so this is this should be. A, okay. 
I'm trying to get myself, work myself right out of having to come in at all, okay? You know, we get the things on video, and then we get the quizzes online, so anyway, alright, what is, what's the current here? What would be the current? Twelve divided by sixty, yes. Yeah. So, twelve divided by sixty is what? Point two? Yeah. So the current here, you got twelve equals I times sixty. And so the current here is point two amp. Okay? So here's we say amperes. Amperes is the way we measure current. Okay? And it's coulombs per Second. Okay? That's how many coulombs per second are flowing through a certain area. Alright, so now in in uh, let's say this 60 this resistance is um, of uh, 60 ohms, sorry, lost my mind because I'm making this up as I'm going along here. But so this is it's the best way to do it, I think. Um, the uh, uh, Slow down. In 30 seconds, here's the, here's the deal. In 30 seconds, how many coulombs of charge, or how many, how many electrons are going to flow through there in 30 seconds? Are going to pass through this guy, this resistor, in 30 seconds? What? 20 seconds. Okay, T equals 20 seconds. And so I so I've got if I've got 0.2 equals Q over 20, the Osgood file is all over it. He said, hey, all you gotta do is multiply. And so I get four coulombs. That's four coulombs. I said how many electrons? How do you figure out how many electrons that is? Divided by what? The charge of an electron. Because we know this. We know that Q. See, this all ties together. That Q equals N times E. And so if I have 4.0 coulombs, Stacy got us that far. And now we're going to get N over times NE. So N is equal to 4.0 coulombs divided by E. Okay? 4.0 coulombs divided by E. And it's usually a BAN. Big ass number. So we're going to take E divided by 1.6. E to the negative 19, and we get 2.5 times 10 to the 19 coulombs flow through there. 2. Point, no, uh, times 15 to the 15. So 2.5 times 10 to the 15 electrons will flow through that resistor in 20 seconds. Basically, is what we're saying. Okay. And if you think about it. Hold on one second, Sarah. I'll lose my train of thought here. If you think about it, four coulombs in 20 seconds. That's a lot. That's huge. So within a minute, within a minute, we're up to 12 coulombs. It's like a bolt of lightning. Goes through that little bitty resistor. But a bolt of lightning hits. The, the difference is the time that a bolt of lightning hits it. Bolt of lightning is almost instantaneous. Okay? So it's a very short amount of time. So you're getting a lot of current. Boom. And current is what kills you. Keep that in mind just for when, you're, when your children ask you things about electricity. Say, voltage doesn't hurt you. It's the current that bites you. All right? It's that it's those charges flowing. Okay, Sarah, yes. Yeah. Okay. There, there we go. E is equal to... E, it, okay, that's a great question. Is E the mass or the charge? It's the charge. And that is equal to, uh, for an electron, it's uh, 1.6 and a proton times, I'm just kind of giving you the magnitude of these, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Do not make the mistake and make it 10 to the negative 16. I do that every time. Because I write down 1.6 and I've got 16 in my brain, and then I get all the homework problems wrong when I signed you up. So, now, because I don't know what the charge is. All right, so now, we've got that. Okay, here's another thing. Here's another thing. 60 watt light bulb. 
is to see things that are normal, everyday stuff that you see around the house. 60 watt light bulb. What is a watt? Do you remember what a watt is? How do we, what, what's the unit for a watt? It, it, what is it, what is it measuring? A watt. <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> what is this, uh, we are measuring what, what, what are we measuring? It's a unit for what? Power, there we go, thank you. Now power is how much energy per second or how much energy over a unit of time that we dissipate. So this is saying, this is saying, this is, let's just put something together here. This is saying that we're doing 60, and I did this to my wife at the grocery store the other day, and she just said, she started walking away from me. And I said, come on, come back, I'm not finished. Um, 60 joules for one second, okay? 60 joules for one second. All right. So how much energy, so when you get your electric bill, how many of you pay your own electric bill? Okay, those are the people that will come to class too, you're not going to make anything online, because they're paying for it, you know, they didn't know I'm kidding. Um, the, uh, the, um, so you get your electric, what's it in, when you get your electric bill? <laughs> right, but what are they, what do you measure, what are the, what's the, what's the, what's the thing they give you? When you buy gas, you spend gallons. When you do an electric bill, they give you what? Kilowatt hours. Exactly. Is kilowatt hours an energy? It sure is. Because look, we've got joules per second. We've got joules over time. Kilowatt hours. So to get joules, um, so if I take kilowatt, which is a thousand watt, times hour, that is Oh, that's power times time, and power times time is energy, okay? Power times time, so a kilowatt hour means um, you're burning a thousand kilowatts of, um, a kilowatt hour is a thousand units of power times an hour, okay? And that's how much energy you use, okay? And we can get into this whole power of 10 thing, which I might do, not today, because uh, I'd definitely be doing physics on the fly, and that would be a terrible thing, all right, on a Friday. Okay, so there, joules per second. So, if you got a cockamamie question on an exam, which would be kind of fun to do, if it said, how many electrons go through a light bulb in 90 minutes? That'd be annoying, wouldn't it? But how would we do that? How many electrons go through a 60 watt light bulb in 90 minutes? Let's do it. Since you're here, and let's make that a question, test question. It won't be that exactly, but it'll be something like that. All right? Okay. So, how many electrons, what did I say? How many electrons? Okay, so what's the time? 90 minutes. It's not going to be as hard. It sounds like a crazy calculation right now, but it's not going to be near as hard as you think when we start, when we break it down, okay? So in other words, I've got 60 watts, which I always, as soon as I hear watt, the first thing I write down is I go, okay, joule per second. The first thing I write, I, I write down, okay? So this thing, so what this is telling me, it eats up 60 joules of energy every second. How many seconds am I having here? What? What's that? Yeah, 60 times 90, which is 5,400, right? So, I've got 60 joules times 5,400 seconds. Oh, 60 watts, I'm sorry, 60 watts times 5,400 seconds, that'll give me the joules, and I go 60 times 540 equals, whoa, that's 324,000 joules. 
Five. Three hundred twenty-four thousand joule. Bang. Okay. Let's say this light bulb is hooked up to a twelve volt battery. Would that work? Would does that work? Can I hook up a light bulb, a sixty watt light bulb, to a twelve volt battery and get it to light up? No. What's that? What should we get? Oh, let's make it 120 volts. Get it come out of the house. 120 volts. Okay? It's hooked up to 120 volts. It's coming into it. So it's hooked in parallel to the thing. Yeah, we can use 120 volts. So, if the volts is 120 volts, which is what comes out of your socket here in the United States, 220 comes out in Europe and in most countries in Asia, I think, and in the Middle East. Um, but anyways, it's got 120 volts. How many coulombs is that? How many coulombs do we have have a charge has gone through this thing in this 90 minutes? How do we get that? What's our energy? What does energy equal in electricity? See, we're putting everything together here on this one little problem. What? Okay. Remember, our energy our electric potential energy, let me put it up there like this. They gave you U. There's an electric potential energy. What did we say that was? You did an annoying problem with it. Remember, you did the four, the thing in the four blocks in the triangle. You were doing Q times V, right? So energy equals Q, V. So Q, V equals 324,000 joules. There you go. 324,000 joules. Now, take that divided by 120. Q equals 324,000 divided by 120 equals, uh, oh, that comes out nice, 2,700 coulombs. Wow. 200 volts of lightning going through that light bulb in 90 minutes. But remember, it's over a long period of time. Alright? Okay. And um, yeah, how many electrons? So what do we do? Yeah. So we divide, so the number would be Q over E. So we take that 27 divided by 1.6 E to the negative 19, and whoa, holy smokes, that's a big number, 1.68, times 10 to the 25th, 22nd, sorry, times 10 to the 22nd, E, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, now, where you might get confused, where you might get confused is what is the mass of a proton? Remember the mass of a proton? 1.67 times 10 to the what? 1.67 times 10 to the negative, there we go, 27. Don't get that confused with the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. That's huge. Like I've said before, if we, if we actually took an atom and made it, a hydrogen atom, made it the size of Arrowhead Stadium, the entire mass of that atom, of, uh, of that electron, would be located in a mosquito on the 50-yard line. There you go. Think about that one over the weekend again. All right. So, that is a lot of little electrons splitting through there in 90 minutes. So that puts it all together. Now, we talked about power. And if you saw this thing, it, it, maybe you recognize something here. That if power is, yes. U equals QV. Yeah, U equals QV. Oh, I know what you're, you're talking about. The, you're talking about... Uh, what what Rich is bringing up there is the uh, amount of energy inside a parallel plate capacitor. 
That would be one half the average voltage that's going through there. That was this wasn't a, this was just different. Good, good question though. Trying to make connections. That's what you try and do. Okay, so here we go. Oh my gosh! All right, Monday. What we're gonna do is, uh, uh, I better get going here. P power equals I times V. So here you've learned two equations today. You know that V equals I R, and then some of you thought you were slick and you said, okay, so I equals V over R, and R equals V over I. Now, the thing about resistance, I, I'd be remiss. Oh, good, we've got a little bit of time. The thing about resistance is this. Resistance de is dependent upon the material and the temperature of that material. Okay? If you cool, in other words, resistance equals this. Resistance equals rho, which is not density. Okay? This is not density. It equals rho, but however, in your homework, you have to actually deal with density. All right, rho, your homework on chapter 17 is kind of fun, kind of cool. I, I did it before I came to class. I was like, oh, this is good stuff. So this is what resist, and rho is the resistivity of the material. And it's de dependent on the temperature, so that's why your table in your book will say at 20 degrees Celsius, okay? So, and now what do you think L is? Length divided by cross-sectional area of the wire. Okay, cross-sectional area of the wire. I got a quick question for you. If you go to the hardware store and you say, I want 16 gauge and 20 gauge wire, which one is going to be thicker, the 16 or the 20? The 16. The lower the number for the gauge, the thicker the wire is. Okay, because you can think of it as cross-sectional area, how many wi how many really how many wires of this kind of wire can I stick through like a one diameter one centimeter diameter circle? Well, if I can only put 16 through there, it's thicker than the one I can put 20 through there. That's how they came up with that. All right. Okay. So this is the resistivity of the thing, and as the temperature goes up, the resistivity goes up also. When things get hot, when things get hot, their resistance goes up. So this is why, now look what happens if you have a really, if you have a really thin little um, extension cord plugged into a space heater. Alright, space heaters are the most dangerous things in the world because they, because they're pure resistance. That's what it is. Because this is, I'll tell you what resistance is. It's the mosh pit of electrons. Alright, y'all been to a Ramones concert? Okay, yeah, probably not, but same type of thing. Um, anyway, if you went to the Ramones or the Sex Pistols back in the 80s, um, they had these mosh pits and everything where, 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 the, where the concert goes and all slam into each other. That's what electrons are doing. And when they slam into each other, guess what happens? They create friction, which makes heat, which is your resistance. Okay? And um, as those electrons and that resistance, as it heats up, it warms things. It gives off the electromagnetic uh, radiation of that, that warm stuff, and it feels nice and toasty. However, if, now look, if you have a skinny little extension cord, that means A is really small. So what happens to your resistance? It goes up. If A, if A gets small, R gets big, okay? And so what can happen is, and what, uh, have you noticed that when we have those really, really cold snaps, there's a lot of fire. Because people are firing up the, um, one, they're doing two things. One, they're, they're firing up space heaters all over the place, and two, they're using just as bad these kerosene heaters and knocking them over, all right? Um, but if you use a space heater, that resistance gets so, builds up so much inside that wire, guess what happens? It melts the casing around it, right? And then that's what causes the fire. All right, so on that safety tip, um, oh, then, then let me finish these string of equations, and then when you come in Monday, I'm just gonna go to problem one of chapter seven, and we're just gonna go through it, okay? All right? Because, they, because this is cool stuff, and a lot of it will be on the test. Right? And I'll say, oh, this is a good test. 
that that 60 watt light bulb that was a good test case i have to give you this um oh okay let's try well, let's do this real quick um let's say oh we already did that we did a we did a current thing we already did that all right oh so let me show you this real quick before you go real quick here's what i'm talking about here's resistance in the wire and it depends upon now you got a thing called drift velocity which is your electrons going from one little area to another boom boom the weird here's the strange thing the actual speed of these electrons is about one millimeter per second they're barely moving at all it's between one and two millimeters per second that's that's not much at all but how fast does the energy move from here to here how fast about that fast speed of light okay that's how fast that thing moves so the energy so all this this mosh pit in here this bumping around it starts here boom boom instantly it moves at the speed of light almost now computer engineers will say eh, not quite that's what they spend their life trying to hatch out but anyway go away have a safe safe weekend and if you can help out the wee blows do it Yeah, you hated it. You want to come in here and do it, don't you?